this video we're going to look at three different ways that you can capture areas within a Revit project. So here we have a set of apartments, for example. So within this you're going to have separate types of units, separate apartments, and within those apartments you're going to have different rooms and room sizes. So I just want to show you the three different ways uh, to capture floor areas and room areas within a Revit project. So the first way you can capture floor areas is by using a room tag simply just going to your architecture tab or typing in rm and just dropping in your room tag so what we're going to do we're going to, have to load in a tag so we're just going to start dropping in rooms here so what you do is just click in the room and the walls of an apartment are defined as room bounding so what you can do is just place a room in each room and you can see it's finding the bounding walls of each of those elements. So that's one apartment is uh, the areas are placed. So what I'm going to do is just select this particular room and it shows me the floor area of that room and if I in fact select one of these walls it shows me that this particular wall is room bounding. So that means if I was to disable room bounding the floor area would not be found by using that wall essentially it would probably spill into the next room here so that's how you create a very simple room area using room tags now that's one way of doing it another way you can also do it and this may be slightly non-conventional you can use something called space tags which are primarily used in i suppose mep modeling um, and will be used extensively by, by mep uh, engineers and, and, and modelers on a BIM project but the reason that you might use them for example if I go to analyze so here I can place spaces so spaces are separate to rooms you can interlink them to a degree whereas if you create rooms you can get them to recreate as a space but to place spaces and the reason I use spaces sometimes to associate with individual apartments or houses is because when you place them so spaces are placed similarly to how rooms are placed they just have slightly different properties so i can start placing these spaces in here placing these spaces and we've got a series of spaces created there now what i can do with a space that i cannot do with a room is that you can create something called zones so zones allow you to collate a series of spaces into a single zone so i'm going to go to edit zone add a space so what I'm going to do is multiple select all of these spaces that I placed so I'm going to be able to associate these which with each apartment because they're in a single zone so you can see if I hover over here it won't allow me to add a room tag to a zone so you can't use room tags within a zone they're, they're completely independent so to speak so you can see when I hover over here now it actually gives me all of the space tags that have been placed now, if I go into my left-hand side here, I can look at the schedules. So if I go into my schedule on the left-hand side, I've got a room schedule. So my room schedule, I will turn on the names and numbers of the room schedule. Name and number. So what I will do is just open these side by side. So that's a room schedule that I've created. So we can see these are all the different rooms that have been placed in here. They will highlight separate different rooms and you can see it only contains the rooms in here it doesn't contain any of these spaces because when you create a space shed, shed, schedule it's separate to a room schedule so i have a space schedule already created here and we can see these are all the spaces here so these are all associated with a zone so the zone is zone number eight and essentially that can be your apartment zone um, or your apartment number can be the zone for example so then if i want to now place another zone within this separate apartment unit over here and give it a number again go back to analyze go to space and again just drop in the spaces spaces and now I want to create a zone of those spaces just go to zone select all of your individual spaces just go to edit it will automatically give it a new number which is in fact the name so this can be your apartment number so apartment number nine, it's gone sequentially, selecting all of these spaces. Hit finish on that. 
and you can see now it's sorted into separate different spaces. I can rename these spaces if I want, so I can call this one living. For example, I can call this bedroom. I'm going to call this one our store. So now we've named all those individual rooms, we can actually sort this list. We can sort it by, so we want to sort it by zone, because that's uh, each different apartment number. We want to put a blank line in between it, just click OK, and it will separate them into different apartments. Now just be aware, when you're adding up the totals of these particular rooms, it only adds up the rooms individual rooms as the floor area of the apartment it doesn't include the partition area so if you're taking the floor area of an entire apartment for planning compliance for example you will need to do that separately and that's where i'm going to show you the third way to also capture areas within a project so we've looked at placing rooms so rooms can only be placed independently they can't be put into zones so you need to then group them separately so the best way to do that is by using space tags or, or space elements within a zone. And there you can see that one has not been added. So we'll add that one into that. And you can see by default it actually calls it space. But we know this is also a store. Called the store. So we've got apartment eight, apartment nine, and you can actually rename these up here. So what I like to do is I'll I leave the original tag intact, just put it in brackets. I'm just gonna put apartment number. Just if you're exporting this to a schedule or anything to maybe somebody doesn't know what, what a zone is, uh, it just kind of avoids confusion within that as well. So now I'm going to capture the area of the actual apartment itself. So now what I want to do is just go back to my architecture tab, come out of spaces, and I want to place an area plan. So this creates a separate plan view as well as allowing you to pla place separate boundary lines. So I can choose the same floor plan, so we've got B101, and I'm just going to choose Area Scheme 1, I'll set that one up myself, I'm going to click No on that, and so it's brought me into that, what I'm going to do is in fact I'm going to go into my Area Boundary, so it's going to allow me to select separate area boundaries, so you can apply the area rules, or you can just get it to lock to the individual walls, which I like to do, so I'm going to select this external wall, this wall, this wall, this wall, and we only want to capture the internal floor area of the actual apartments themselves. So we're just going to tidy those up. If any of these walls move, because we've locked those particular lines, they will move with each of those walls as well. So the purple lines are just area lines only visible in this particular view and you can see on the left hand side it's created a separate area plan what I can now do is create an area schedule for that apartment so area schedule what I need to do is place an area tag within here as well so what I can do now is just place my area tag within here and it gives me the total area finding all of those external boundaries so just keep in mind that when you're placing this area, it is separate to the space and both the room tags. It's only taken into account these particular boundary, these purple boundary lines essentially. So I can go into my area schedule here and I can see that this particular apartment, I can call it apartment number, number eight. Apartment number eight is 76.6 uh, square meters, making sure that that complies with the, the relevant local standards and then I can see the individual room areas within the space schedule. You can rename this space schedule if you want. What you can then do with that information, if you want, you can export that just using export. Go to file, go into reports, schedule or room area report. You can go into schedule and just select the particular schedule. So whichever one you're actually in, so I'm in area schedule here on the left, it's gonna export that as a TXT file that of course can be copied directly into Excel uh, tabs as well. And you can do the same with the space schedule and the same with the room schedule if you're using room schedules. So just to be clear, you can create a separate area plan with your purple boundary lines 
Secondly, you can create a room schedule, which are just independent room tags. You can see here, they all contain the floor area. If the walls move, then the area updates. Or alternatively, you can create a space schedule and in fact place that on a zone for each separate apartment or unit.